excuse me, $5.2 million. And then it drops by another 26% in another five years to just about $2.75 million. So it's overall a 70% drop in 10 years, which is I think really significant given where you were at just a number of years ago uh, after having made a lot of growth-related investments. A lot of that debt is really coming offline pretty quickly. And by 2018, really, it's all but finished, uh, all of your existing debt. So a fairly rapid debt amortization from here on out. Moving on to the next slide, we broke down that debt profile a little bit. And I think you're aware of this, but it's, it bears repeating that really you use, uh, you use student self-supporting debt and you use self-supporting enterprise revenues for almost all of your debt service. Very little of your debt service is paid with property taxes currently. That's probably the most visible debt, but uh, really you use special assessments, you use electric uh, wastewater and water utility revenues, and then a variety of other special sources like that special highway fund, some airport reimbursements, park uh, dedicated sales tax, and so on. So when you get to that top piece of the bar, that orange piece, that's really the property tax piece you can see how that drops pretty significantly in itself as well uh, from uh, 2015 to 2020 and then to 2025. So uh, I think it's you know, worth looking at your tax supported debt, but then also uh, comparing that to your utility related debt. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, what happens to the electric debt from 2016 to 2017? that goes and makes it significant drop. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of debt obligations that are finished in 2016 uh, that are being partially supported with electric revenues. I don't think there's any debt that is exclusively electric, Laura, but I know you had some debt, debt that's paying off this coming year and then the next year. So it, it's kind of interesting, I'm glad you mentioned this. You have both you know, these Walmart revenues coming online in 2016, but it's also uh, timing up so that it's uh, coinciding with some pretty rapid drops in debt service from 15 to 16 and then 16 to 17. But what is it that we bought that we're paying off? I remember what that is, or the generator rehab? Or the There was a, uh, let's see, it, does start, it drops off starting when? 2016 and 17, yeah. So you have a little bit, I don't have it out that far. The energy center building itself, the 1450 drops off soon. Um, there's some refunding pieces. Old stuff for substation two. <coughs> That's really all that's out there is substations and, and those things start dropping off. Basically, we did everything in a 10 year, if we could, we tried to pay everything off in 10 years, which is generally less than the useful life of a lot of these things, but that's what we tried to do because it was gr aggressive. Any other questions on that before I move on? Okay. So then going back to property tax supported debt. We've looked at all of your debt, including the breakdown, but let's look more specifically at property tax related debt and the <coughs> that you have to do new things supported with taxes as opposed to utility revenues. And just as a hypothetical, uh, please know that we're not pre-assuming any capital investments of any sort, but to give you a sense of what kind of capacity you do have and how you might utilize that, we ran uh, a couple of bond scenarios, three actually, uh, assuming that you would fund $2 million in costs next year, $4 million of costs in the following year, and then $6 million of costs in the year after that for general uh, governmental purposes, total of $12 million of capital investment. We assumed each issue would be paid off over 15 years with a fixed interest rate of 3.5%. That's actually much higher than current market rates. Right now, if you were to sell bonds in this market, you could easily achieve a rate closer to 2.75% based on your credit rating and market demand for bonds. Uh, we just sold some bonds for Mission up the road and uh, their bonds were a little more front loaded but it went out 15 years and their overall interest rate was about 2.25. Again, because it was front loaded, 
but still you can get a sense for where you would be at, and you have basically the same credit rating as Mission does. Um, so, you know, really opportune times, but we wanted to be more conservative, so we went with 3.5%. And what, you, what we found out is, you know, if you assume level debt service starting in 2016, so nothing for fiscal 15, but starting in fiscal 16, your, average, your annual debt service would be up 175 uh, in starting in 16, and then as each of those next two bond issues came online, you would increase that by about another 175, so that you were right around 525 total once you were paying on all three of those bond issues. So what you can see on the next slide then, is when we factor in uh, the retiring of your debt along with the fairly modest inflationary growth that we see in your tax base and that you're, 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 you're using in your own projections, assuming you didn't issue any new debt or use cash to make any new capital investments. So you just sort of locked down the bond and interest fund and didn't transfer over those tax revenues to the general fund. That, that's what the, the blue area represents. So it's growing from basically a few hundred thousand dollars currently to about $11.6 million over a 10-year window. If you issued that $12 million of bonds in those stages that I just mentioned, that's where the red uh, part of the chart is, again, starting at the same place, and then ending up at about $4 million of capacity. So what this is telling us is that you've got capacity to undertake a fair amount of property tax supported debt if you saw fit to do that, and that still doesn't preclude you making cash capital uh, investments. And certainly we have lots and lots of clients that take a hybrid approach. They use cash for some things and debt for some things. So the point isn't you know, to issue debt versus cash, it's to, to uh, make the point that you do have a really strikingly increasing uh, capacity within your existing uh, tax rate. And so you have some, I think, some interesting choices to make on what kind of capital investments you'd like to make for the community. Also, I'd point out that really, even if you did this new debt investment or went with more debt, we really wouldn't see uh, there being any negative impact on your S&P credit rating of AA minus. For one thing, uh, you're likely to be retiring uh, your existing debt still faster than you'd be adding on new debt, right? So. The, the replacement would be slower and, and lower than what you're paying off. But then also in, in S&P's methodology, financial management and planning for the future really matters more than debt burden. They want to see stable fund balances, growing fund balances ideally, and then also the fact that you're doing capital planning, you're doing strategic planning, so that you're not caught by surprise by some needed investment that, that sneaks up on you. Bruce. Yes. You mentioned that they like to see, uh, you know, increasing fund balances. Uh, in our case, we've kind of we're, we're trying to stabilize and level ours off. Yes. I mean, is, how, how is that going? I'm, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that, Mr. Mayor, because I I should have been more clear. Uh, we actually talked about that plan in great detail with S and P on the last rating call, and they were very comfortable with that, especially since most Kansas communities are at or below that 25% target. So they understood what, what you were looking to do, that, that this was an intentional drawdown and in investment of fund balance. And so I think if you started getting down, you know, 15, 10%, that would be more danger zone, but I don't think you're anywhere close to that. Very good. Okay. Now, Bruce, uh, got a question really quickly before yes. we go on. This, now, these, these projections are obviously with, these are, these are basically with static projections. So this is not incorporating any additional economic development, growth, uh, revenue enhancement, or anything like that. This is, this is just standard. We have absolutely no growth whatsoever in our, in our, revenue balance, in our revenues. That's, this is where we're at. Correct. I, some very conservative assumptions on just market inflation, on mm -hmm. market values, like we all see on our tax statements, uh, now that the economy is recovering, as well as, I think, a very small number of building permits for new houses. It's so yes, Councilmember Sheet, you're absolutely right. We're not assuming any new step up in development or in tax base. Okay, so yeah. I'm, I'm I'm throwing that as a as a as a first part, and then the, the, the next one's a policy question, and it's really more posed to the other members of this, of this group, and that is, if we do see any enhancement whatsoever 